Nigerians react as Brigadier General Zama Zirkusu and four other soldiers lose their lives at the battlefront in Bulguma, a few, a few kilometers from Askira Uba, local government in Borno State. Niger railway workers spoke out as they issue a three day warning industrial action. Bill to commence on Thursday, November 18, 2021. They say that the safety of passengers who use the train is in the hands of workers who receive less than 30,000 R. And as always, we will be reviewing the uh, papers uh, on Off the Press this morning with our guests and uh, sharing with you some of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this Monday morning. With a few minutes gone after 7 a.m., we'll say good morning and thanks for joining us on PLOS TV Africa this Monday morning, the 15th of November, 2021. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. Welcome to The Breakfast. And I am Messi Bokpo. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Monday morning. We hope you had a very brilliant weekend. Uh, we're, of course, going to be starting up the conversations this morning with uh, talking about, uh, talking about uh, the top trending stories, uh, just two of them. Uh, that have, of course, created conversations across Nigeria over the weekend. Uh, for some people who didn't necessarily have a great weekend, as good as Mercy's, uh, we started, of course, with uh, a person called Samuel Ogundipe. I hope I pronounce it right. Uh, who is, of course, the publisher of the People's Gazette. If you know that um, Media House is an online media platform that has been very, very popular in the last few years, mostly uh, churning out, uh, you know, uh, media reports and investigative reports on the Nigerian government and beyond. Um, but the story is a very dirty one for Samuel Ogundipe this, uh, this morning. And of course, these are still allegations. It is said that he is currently on the run. Uh, from the EFCC and the DSS after he is accused of trying to, uh, you know, uh, take, you know, some amount of money, you know, for a blackmail, rather, uh, a certain very popular person, Alan Oyema, the uh, owner of uh, Airpeace Airlines of $300,000. The, the story basically says that he uh, had written a story on Airpeace Airlines on Alan Oyema and, of course, had called him. I reached out to him to tell him that there was a story uh, that he was working on and uh, he was you know going to go ahead to publish it you know except th these are the allegations except of course uh, he got you know some money from Alan Uyema um, and then you know it goes on to say that Alan you know tells him that these stories are false you know and that you know they're you know not 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 no part of it is actually true um, but you know of course they eventually got to talking about how much money was required uh, to end, you know, this conversation, and you know, um, Samuel Gundipe allegedly then says three hundred thousand uh, dollars. Alan Oyema um, offers one hundred and fifty. They come to an agreement, and then you know he invites him. Well, at this point, you know, Alan Oyema then reaches out to the DSS and the EFCC, um, who then ask him to continue with the conversation. Um, and then, you know, it goes on. Then he invites Samuel Gundipe to his office to pick up, you know, the money in three tranches. Um, Samuel then says that he's not in the, in the country at the moment and that he will send an assistant uh, to, you know, pick up the first, you know, um, payment. And so he sends one of his staff, I believe, a female. She goes to Ale Oyema's office and then she's arrested by uh, the EFCC and the DSS operatives. Um, um, and, you know, that's where the story wraps up. So it's, it's basically a very, very dirty story. Um, that normally, um, when you see things like this, you, would, you know, the first thing that would come to mind for a lot of people would be that, or oh, it's simply just a you know way of uh, the Nigerian government trying to uh, bring down a media you know house uh, mm -hmm. you know an online media platform that has been you know very 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 you know vocal um, you know putting out you know anti-government stories or at least you know putting out some very very damning investigative reports on the Nigerian government. But you know I've looked at it also, and I I would say that I I don't want to just hold that narrative. You know there there, it, there seems to be more of it. Or more connected to it, you know, because you wouldn't necessarily drag Alan Uyema into a, a messy situation like this. If there wasn't some element of, you know, truth here and there, might be ten percent truth, might be ninety percent. Nobody knows. No, but but you know, I, I'm thinking that first of all, if, if this is anything to go by, because uh, according to the law, he's innocent until been proven guilty by a court of competence jurisdiction, and so therefore. Um, it is what it is, but if that story is something to go by, it's unethical, it's actually 
unprofessional of him to do that. Yeah. So yes, it's possible that yes, there's an element of truth to the story that yes, Alan and Yemar did X, Y, Z, according to that report. Yeah. But the fact that he's actually telling him that, you know, if he gives him, he needs to take money not to publish the story. It doesn't make sense. So if you have a story, you have a report, and you're sure that everything is together, you're sure that all of your facts are correct, why not put out a story? Rather than, you know, wanting to blackmail. I think that that's where the issue is. But like you will rightly mention, uh, fingers are going to be crossed until uh, yeah, this until, is also until not until Samuel Gunipe, you know, yeah. clears the air, you know, because it, it, uh, I think everything now falls on his table. It is left for him to now come out and state exactly what the situation is. You know, if there truly was a story concerning Alan and Yema or Epic Airlines, if there truly, you know, was a conversation on, you know, on three hundred thousand dollars or you know some level or some blackmail, if you know he asked for money or he was offered money, I mean, there's there's a lot that needs to be unravelled here. Um, but we cannot act like. You know, these things don't happen. Mm. We can't act like in, in Nigeria's journalism space today mm. that there aren't reports that don't get put out simply because somebody was paid. I'm sure that those things mm. happen. No, no, that's um, very correct. Um, you cannot, you know, point any direct fingers because you don't know who and who, um, you know, is involved in situations like this. You know, sadly, this is the People's Gazette that a lot of people have trusted mm. uh, for a long time, you know, now, mostly in current administration uh, because of the reports that they've put out. And so um, this might do some damage to their um, reputation. Um, and to the credibility of their reports and some of all of that. Uh, but, you know, once again, it's really depending on what Samuel Ogundipe is able to, you know, say from, from here because he, it's really left to him. He worked at Premium Times. I remember when he was at the Premium Times and it was also very popular at the Premium Times before then, you know, setting up uh, the People's Gazette. So, um, it's, it, everything really, the ball is in his court. Mm, it, it really does. And we're hoping that you remember at time, over time, you constantly hear the fact that, you know, journalists have been accused of the brown envelope and yeah. the fact that they hold the stories. And that's really not cool. We have talked about corruption over time and corruption is not just um, limited in particular space. Like I always say, we might, you might not become the president. You might not become the governor tomorrow or a senator or chairman of your local government. But I'm saying in the sphere where you have control, what are you doing with that control? What are you doing, uh, you know, at that little corner? So everyone in everywhere yeah. that we find ourselves, you know, little, you, you have control over something. And if we begin to shine our light, I'm beginning to sound very spiritual now, but if we begin to do the right thing, I'm saying, yeah. imagine that you do the right thing. Let's follow the procedures, the practice of what we ought to do. I remember a time where one of my relatives had to share an experience of, you know, getting to a hospital, and then you find out that the doctor is trying to play very smart on you, trying to tell you that you have X, Y, Z, when you don't have it, you have some kidney failure, it could be, you know, all of that fear so that you could probably um, they could charge you for more and treat you for what it actually is. Maybe you just have a fever or, or malaria, but then they constantly tell you, oh, it's, it could be kidney failure, it could be some liver issue, it could be cancer. You know, you're, you have this, it looks like this, and then you'll be scared, cajoled to actually drop more monies, and then they'll be treating you just for malaria. So yes, the corruption is in every area of our economy. And like I always say, uh, that's not on the president now, that's not on the governor, mm -hmm. and that's on you. Let's do the right thing, especially in this profession. Because you know, I, I, when you talk about the, the judiciary, People constantly say the judiciary is the hope of the common man, as well as the media as well. I mean, yeah, we're absolutely. there, you know, to be the watchdog of the people and for the people, and we cannot compromise, you know, um, you know, the practice. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree, you know, and that, but once again, you know, these are still allegations, and of that's course, what they will be course. until there is some truth, you know, and um, um, sadly, oh, well, not sadly, actually, this is, you know, the level of information that we have concerning this. But it, do, it doesn't mean that it's um, not true. There's a tendency that, yeah. yes, there's an element yeah. of it is true. Yeah. Also, on the other hand, it's also possible that it could that also is, be government. Uh -huh. It could also be that um, government is just... Uh, and that's why we need to hear from the other side, you know. So, you know, this is, like I said, this is, this is the amount of information we have on this story now. Um, it is now left for Samuel Ogundipe and the People's Gazette to go ahead and share their own side of the story and let us know if all of this is false, um, if there was any interaction whatsoever, if there was any report whatsoever concerning Alan Yema, if there was any talk, talk about money, um, if they have any conversations, uh, you know, phone conversations that have been saved, if they have any, you know, text messages that have been saved also mm. that, you know, show that this is ab absolutely false. I mean, it's left to him. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that there is some clarity as, as quickly as possible. Hopefully. We'll definitely follow up. Also, uh, talking money now, but not uh, with uh, or through blackmail, we're moving to talk about the CBN and, of course, uh, certain financial institutions in Nigeria that have been called out on social media for closing or shutting down uh, accounts of uh, some of their customers. 
Um, and this is with reactions to trading in cryptocurrency. Um, I also got to see a report, and of course, it, this is the focus mostly on, is on Kuda Bank um, and a few other you know uh, banks in Nigeria. Uh, they've been called out bitterly by uh, presence on social media, and you know they've been accused of uh, illegally shutting down accounts of uh, their users for simply uh, having transactions that they didn't necessarily verify were cryptocurrency transactions. Um, this is in reaction, of course, to the CBN banning the trading of cryptocurrency in the country. And, of course, the circular was sent out. I, I remember that I've also gotten to see a couple of other banks putting out their own um, internal memos saying that, you know, because of the CBN's policy on cryptocurrency trading, you know, this is what you know, needs to be done, you know, in order for them to, you know, to save their, their heads and some of all of that. Um, but you know, Kota Bank has been called out mostly because of the way and manner that it has carried out its own uh, you know, checks and balances with, you know, the cryptocurrency, um, you know, watch. Um, the challenge with it mostly is that, you know, people, a lot of people have complained that even accounts that have no business with crypt cryptocurrency have been closed um, because they seem to have fraudulent transactions. They seem to have more transactions than uh, normal um, or than, than is expected. But I'm going to share where I've, I think the biggest challenge is because I understand the concerns that, or the, the points that people have made that this is illegal, that there is no law actually in Nigeria that says that gives you know any bank the right to close an account because it's not an actual law. The CBN doesn't make laws. Um, but I think, you know, the argument for them would be that the CBN is the regulator and, you know, these banks, the Kudas and, and the likes can have their licenses withdrawn uh, if they don't, you know, go, go through or follow through the policies that have been set by the uh, regulator, which is the CBN. But I'm going to share something, and this is from one of the banks. Um, it's uh, Compliance Advisory on Cryptocurrency Dealings and Transactions. And this is where I think the challenge is coming from. Uh, the fact that a lot of these banks do not do enough to verify exactly um, you know what these transa transactions are about. They do not. There, there is some some level of stereotyping with you know the way that they are carrying out their activities, and that is where the, the ch challenge is coming from. It says here, and then the the topic here is uh, the lead um, of the story says uh, compliance advisory on cryptocurrency dealings and transactions. This is from a particular bank, one of those that was mentioned. It says, um, further to the email below, we wish, to, we wish to reiterate that the Central Bank of Nigeria is strictly monitoring non-compliance with the directive on closure of all accounts involved in cryptocurrency for high-impact regulatory sanction. In view of the above, all staff are hereby advised to again identify persons, entities, transacting or operating cryptocurrency exchanges within their systems and ensure that such accounts are closed immediately. Um, I'm not going to go further with it, but there are, there are certain things that they've pointed out as red flags. The first one here says, I'm going to take maybe like two. Number one says, accounts receiving high daily inflows from a huge number of multiple payees from all over the country. Um, staff responsibility is engage customer further and involve and inform compliance. So this one for me doesn't really make a lot of sense. And it's really not enough reason for you to be shutting down an, an account simply because a person is receiving inflow from, you know, different parts of the country. You remember the time where, you know, the EFCC, uh, the time where you had the chairman, Abdur Rashid Bauer, saying that banks gave the instruction that banks should investigate, you know, the source of incomes of their customer before accounts can be opened. So yeah. it, it's, more, it's more like, you know, one and the same thing that we're talking about right now. First of all, we begin to ask the question, why were the banks created? The banks are created for us to, you know, put our valuables, keep valuables and keep monies, and that's it. Uh, I don't know if the banks were created for, I mean, they were meant to audit, uh, you know, the Not income of people. Yeah. I mean, audit, so it, it just makes it very confusing. Not very confusing, but totally embarrassing because it feels like we do not know what we're doing at this point in time as a country. Yes, you think you want to check out, you know, illicit flow or financial crimes and all of that, but should the banks be the one auditing and all of that? And I'm thinking that right now, he would actually pave way for cryptocurrency, you know, to be practiced. If you have these banks telling right now, I mean, how do you now call, call on um, EFCC on me that you found X, Y, Z amount of money? I don't understand. It, it, it's complete madness. Um, and, you know, it, it continues to look like Nigeria, the Nigerian government is fighting um, a, a cryptocurrency or fighting innovation that they... they just don't want to thrive. Um, but, but, but then we have then, then, we, then we actually then we have, have the, the e well, e -Naira. e is not necessarily cryptocurrency. It's it's, it's really oh. just an online. It's <laughs> e is like Huda Bank. Um, uh, my point really is, um, it continues to look like the the, the the Nigerian government is trying to 
choke on people who are thriving somehow, some way. Um, I understand, you know, that these banks fear the CBN. They don't need to wait for any directive or any court of law to give orders. Immediately the CBN sneezes, they catch a cold. Um, which shouldn't be so, because we but, live but in a the, democracy. But they should understand the essence that they were created. It's like you were created for a particular purpose. And when someone begins to ask you to do X, Y, Z, that's not what the way, That's not why they were created. I don't see any reason why the bank should be sneezing or should be freezing at the sneeze but of But it CBS. really is because of the country that we currently are. And that's the same thing with telcos. When the Nigerian government said, you know, that uh, Twitter should be uh, suspended, should be shut down, there was no argument. There was, they didn't need to wait for any courts. They didn't need to wait for anybody. I mean, there was no legal directive, you know, with regards to that policy or that, you know, directive. And they all complied. So it seems like they are also living in fear. The banks, the telecom, you know, companies and every other person seems to be living in that same fear of, oh, if we don't obey, you know, we will have our license withdrawn or we will be punished or something like that. They don't need to wait for any court of law, for any court ruling on any of these things. And that's where the huge challenge is. Um, why one person who heads a certain you know, agency in the country can give a directive and nobody argues. Nobody you know, points out that, oh, no, we shouldn't do this. Some other thing, and I'm going to share some other thing with you. Number 20 on this list says accounts such as this, 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 savings account, um, business savings account, uh, um, uh, whatever, a couple of accounts that they listed here, um, with high volume, listen, with high volume transactions operated by individuals between the age brackets of 18 and 30. What is going on? <laughs> you, can you just imagine that? Between the age bracket of um, 18 and 30 years as signatories. So you're saying that in the current Nigeria in 2021, a person between 18 and 30 is already seen as a criminal if they have multiple inflows into their account. It doesn't matter if they run POS businesses at the side of the road at the junction. It doesn't matter if they run food businesses and they have a lot of people ordering food every day. It doesn't matter if their makeup are... It doesn't matter. Uh, and you also you know, know something... It's, it's pretty much know. the same... Apologies. It's pretty much the same way the Nigerian police would stereotype and criminalize a person that they see that is young and has a car or has a laptop. It's the same thing. No, you know the stereotypes. It also goes to the show a long way. I mean, a, a, a young lady pretty dressed up like myself right now, and you've been tagged, you know. Uh, you've been given all of those names and all of that. But it's, it's quite worrisome. We begin to live in, it looks as if we're without laws. It, it looks as if we don't know what we're doing. And it constantly looks as if, you know, there's the a way the government is just trying to make life very unbearable and uncomfortable for people. Yes, we understand. You can't take out the fa fact that yeah, you have um, financial crimes, right? So illicit activities going on and what have you. But that's not the way to go, you know, to handle the situation. You don't begin to ask banks and begin to audit since when did that happen? And then the banks themselves can come together don't they have you know can come together to begin to ask questions why should we do is that your job was that why you were created is that the purpose you were created for let the government do their job they need to find ways and uh, you know pattern of checking out all of these excesses if that's the one to do and then like you rightly mentioned how do you not begin to say that if you find someone between the age of 18 and all of that they are not supposed to have monies let's no. not forget that uh, sometimes people money. go to school i mean you remember that as yeah. well so you have kids who are in school and then you need to send them resources uh you know for school school fees and what have you yeah it's really really sad it's and ridiculous unfortunate. To be all right um, those are our top trending stories this morning. Stay with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, Off the Press kicks off, where we have a review of the paper, uh, the stories, rather, making headlines across Nigeria this Monday morning.